in his last act in this world would have been insulting Allah's Prophet. Oh, being rude to somebody. But because uh, of this, he may accept Islam. He may, he may come into the deen. When the Prophet Ali والسلام, conquered uh, the, the, the Makkah, he, he was face to face with his greatest enemies. People who were murderers and killers and people who had done all kinds of bad things to him and to the Muslims. People who had fought him for 20 years. Yet the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they, all, they were all presented to him, what did he do? Uh, they were so scared, they were trembling. He's going to get it executed, he's going to get us killed. He's gonna, and if he had to do that, he, it would have been perfectly fair. He wouldn't have done anything wrong. You know, that's what they deserved. They were all killers and, 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 and they had stolen all the properties of the Muslims. Yet the Prophet Ali looked at them and he said, Is Habu Fantum He said, Go home. Today is the day of freedom. Go home. All of you can go home. And he freed all of them. He said, Go home. And it so happened that the next day, all of those people of Makkah came to him testifying in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. One of them came and said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, O Muhammad. was one lady, Hind. She said, Wallahi, O Muhammad, there was no man on earth that I hated more than you. But I swear by Allah, today there is no man on earth that I love more than you. From, from what you have shown us, the akhlaq that you have shown us. So really, our Prophet والسلام, best of Allah's creation, khalqan wa khuluqan, you know, in, 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 in character and creation. One day in Medina, he saw the group of Sahaba all standing in a big circle, and uh, something is going on, there's a commotion, and sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he asks them, what's going on? They say, Ya Rasulullah, there's a camel that's gone crazy. And, and uh, he's in the middle of the ring. And this camel is, is going haywire. And, and the, the, the owner of the camel is struggling to control it. So the Prophet ﷺ says, let me see what I can do. So they say, no, no, Ya Rasulullah, don't go there, don't go. It's dangerous, it's very dangerous. It can hurt you. He said, no, it's fine. He goes there. As he walks towards the animal, towards the camel, and the Sahaba, you know, are getting scared, and Omar is taking his sword out, and he's, uh, you know, if the camel makes a move, I'm going to make a move too, you know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, Umariyin, you know, so, uh, uh, but Rasulullah also had Umari side to him, but we are Muhammadiyin, you know, uh, uh, all of them derive, you know, something from him. Uh, the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, I mean Umar he said about Umar radiallahu anh, if, if if Umar walks in one alley, Shaitan runs away to the other alley. <laughs> but you know, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, he goes to the camel and lo and behold they see the camel coming towards him, and then the camel bends down and puts his head by the feet of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As if he is kissing the feet of the Rasul alayhi salatu was salam. And then the Prophet ﷺ lifts up the neck of the camel. And then it is as if the camel is whispering something in the ears of the Prophet ﷺ. He's making some sounds and the Prophet ﷺ, you know, just nods his head. And thereafter, he calls the owner of the camel. He calls him. He comes. He says, are you the owner of this camel? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, your camel is telling me that you give it too much work and too little to eat. And that's why it's carrying on like this. That's why he's, he's, he's out of control. Is that true? Then the man cries. He said, yes, it's true, Ya Rasulullah. He said, then treat him well, O man. For Allah will take us into account for every living creature. Allah, we are going to be accountable to Allah for how we treat every living creature. Everything that Allah has put life into it, we have to respect it. Because that life that they have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allahumma salli salli barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Our Nabi, our Prophet sallam, was the most beautiful of all, all of Allah's creation. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most perfect of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Nobody can find absolutely any imperfection in him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In all his dealings, all his aspects, all his matters sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most perfect of Allah's creation. Uh, it, it was once, you know, uh, he was sitting with Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Umar. And uh, he asked uh, for some, something to eat. And, uh, you know, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha was there. And uh, it, was, it, it was, you know, uh, her turn. He was, you know, he, he, it was, he was with her on that night. You know, he had more than one wife, so he would share the nights. And he was with Sayyidah Aisha that night. 
and he was sitting with Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Umar and he wanted something to eat and one of the other wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam she sent something she, she heard that they all lived in very small rooms next to each other and she heard that and she sent something so when she sent it Sayyidina Aisha came and she saw that so when Sayyidina Aisha saw that she became you know jealous of that and she spilled that whole thing you know, she just kicked it, or just Allah knows how, what she exactly did, and that whole thing fell apart, that whole bowl. And she did that intentionally, and then she went back into her room. They say the Aisha was young, and how did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam react to that? You know, how would we react to that? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he smiled first of all. The first thing he did was smile. He didn't get angry. And he looked at Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Umar, they are sitting there and they are looking, you know, and the Prophet ﷺ looks at them and he says, Gharat Ummakum. He said, your mother uh, is very possessive. <laughs> you know, uh, your mother, you see, Abu Bakr is the father of Sayyidina Aisha, but when it comes to relationship of Iman, she is his mother. Allah. The wives of Rasulullah, the mothers, Azwaju Madam, he says, he made an excuse for her, for her behavior. He said, Gharat. You know, your mother became, uh, was overcome by a feeling of possessiveness. In Arabic, we, we call it ghira. It's, it's difficult to translate. I don't think there's a word in English. It's not jealous. It's not only possessive. It's, it's, it's this, you know, mixture of all of that. Ghira. You know, um, if you see your wife talking to another man, it could be anybody, but you, you, that, that feeling that you have, it's called ghira. Or you see your husband talking to another lady, you know, it, it can be anybody, you know can be the, 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 the lady at the counter in the shop, but you just, that feeling that you have of possessiveness, of jealousy, or in Arabic it's called ghira. So the Prophet Sallallahu tells the Sahaba who was sitting there, uh, your mother was overcome by ghira. And he smiles, and he excuses her. her. And then he looks at her, he says, and he says, oh Aisha, now you have to bring the food now. <laughs> you know, uh, so then say the Aisha goes and she prepares something and she sends something. But uh, I'm, I'm just trying to highlight the beauty of his akhlaq, his character. Oh. How beautiful, how simple. If, if it, had, it had to happen with any one of us, we would have made it a big issue and it would have become a big problem. But the Prophet ﷺ dealt with the matter so nicely and so sweetly. Everybody was happy. Allahumma salli salim barik alayhi. So brother, this is an Islam. The third aspect of loving somebody, after loving them for because of their beauty or because of their, the, uh, their perfection, is because of their favor on you, what they've done for you. And when it comes to that, really... Absolutely nobody in Allah's creation has a more of a favor on us than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Allah's favor on us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا Allah says, I have done a favor on you, O believers, by sending my Prophet to you. He is Allah's favor on us. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his favors on us are beyond any comprehension. Islam... We, have, we, we got it through him. Iman, we got it through him. Quran, we got it through him. Every, the sunnah, the sharia, everything that we know, the salah, the zakah, the hajj, every aspect of our deen, we received it from him, through him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No human being has a favor on us like him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody can repay him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on the day of judgment, his favor, first of all, his favors were not only when he was alive. Even after he passed on to the barzakh, his favors on his ummah continue. <coughs> One day he said to the Sahaba, Hayati khairul lakum wa mati khairul lakum. My life is good for you and my death is good for you. He said, how is, how is that, Ya Rasulullah? Kayfa <coughs> zalika, Ya Rasulullah? He said, my life is good for you because Yuhaddisunillah wa haddisukum. Allah speaks to me and gives me his messages and then I share it with you. Directly what God is directly fresh from God. I share it with you. And my death is good for you, because after I pass away, in a'malukum tu'radu alayya, all your actions are presented to me. فَإِنْ رَأَيْتُ خَيْرًا حَمِدْتُ اللَّهَ وَإِنْ رَأَيْتُ غَيْرَ ذَلِكْ اسْتَغْفَرْتُ لَكُمْ She said, all your actions are presented to me, so if I see good deeds, I thank Allah for that. And if I see otherwise, I ask Allah forgiveness for you. So while we are busy sinning, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is busy praying for us. He's busy in, his, in the barzakh, in his grave, in he sallallahu alayhi wa in the other world, in the other dimension. He's busy praying for our forgiveness. He's concerned about us. He feels the pain of this ummah. 
you know, he, 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 he joins in the joys of this ummah. In his dua is all the time for us. Allah said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِعَزِيبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, the enemies of Islam at that time, they came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, you tell us all these stories, the Quran, God destroyed the people of Noah, the people of Musa, the Moses, the people, all these peoples, you tell us Allah destroyed them because they didn't believe in their prophets. Why doesn't God destroy us? It's a question. Abu Jahl, uh, the enemies, asked the Prophet Muhammad and the disbelievers. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, uh, nothing, you just kept quiet. I don't know. <laughs> Why does it destroy you? Then Allah revealed the verse of the Quran. In the Quran, Allah then revealed this verse where he said, Indeed, God was never going to destroy them as long as you are amongst them, O Muhammad. In other words, his mere presence amongst the enemies of Islam was a barrier between Allah's punishment upon them. And he made sure, by the way, that after he leaves as well, no punishment comes upon those who disbelieve in him. He made a dua to Allah. He said, Oh Allah, do not destroy my nation. And by my nation, he doesn't mean the Muslims. Huh? He, by my nation, he means all mankind. Because he has been sent to all of, them, all of mankind, all of humanity. He says, Oh Allah, do not destroy my nation like you destroyed the nations before me. Uh, of Moses and, and, and Noah, you know, the, uh, do not destroy them with a flood. Like the people of Moses were drowned in the, in the, 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 the ocean and the people of Nuh -Islam were drowned with the rain. He said, oh Allah, I ask you not to destroy my people, the nations that I have been sent to, with these drownings and, and all these punishments. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted that to him. That's why we see that Moses, the people who denied him, while he was alive, all of them drowned. People of the Pharaoh and uh, we know the story. Nuh -Islam, the people who uh, fought him... Uh, Allah let them all drown in the ocean, in the rain, the flood that came. Uh, the, the people of Ad and Samud and all these different prophets, all these things that happened to them. Uh, the people of uh, Jesus, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them, you know, the Romans and so on after that. Uh, but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came 1400 years ago and he left this physical world 1400 years ago. Yet Allah does not destroy anybody that doesn't believe in him. Allah doesn't drown them. Why doesn't that happen? It's because of his prayer and his concern. So really, you know, his, his favor is on all of mankind. Allah says in the Quran, O oh Muhammad, I have sent you as a mercy for all of existence, for the entire universe. He didn't say, I've sent you as a mercy for the Muslims only. I've sent you as a mercy for the believers only, or for the Arabs only, or for the people of this earth only, or the humans only. He says, O oh Muhammad, I have sent you as a mercy for my entire creation. He's Allah's mercy for everybody, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, his favor upon us continues even now. And on the day of judgment, really will be the day in which we will say, we will see his greatest favor upon us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His greatest favor upon us, on the day which is described in the Quran, as, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مَرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَيْذٍ شَأْنُ يُغْنِيهِ on the day, in, Allah says, on that day, a man will flee from his mother and his father. And he will flee from his wife and his children. And he will flee, he will flee from his own brothers and siblings. On that day, nobody is going to know nobody. On that day, the only one that's going to be concerned about us is going to be the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, after... The people who are destined for paradise enter into paradise. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa will not enter. He will stand there by the door interceding for those who have not yet come in. Yes, he will intercede until uh, there will be people who, who would be destined for the fire. And the Prophet sallallahu will intercede to Allah and say, Ya Allah, don't let them go there. And they will get into paradise because of his intercession. Shafa'a. There will be people who will enter into Jahannam. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, will intercede for them to come out. They will come out and the man will say, uh, why, am I getting, why am I taken out of Jahannam? He said, the Prophet Muhammad interceded for you. Allah. You know, the same Prophet that you didn't, you know, really bother about and so on. He interceded for you. And he will, the Prophet said, he will continue interceding for so many people that it will come to a point where Allah will tell him, enough ya Muhammad, leave some people for my mercy as well. <laughs> <Allah>. <laughs> leave some people 
that that I can remove them from the fire through my rahmah. And خلي حتى اللي معجل رحمتي. You know, leave somebody for my rahmah. You've nearly taken everybody out due to your intercession. Imagine, you know, you know he, he, while we will all rush into a paradise to enjoy paradise and forget about our family members and all these friends in, in this dunya, the Prophet, peace be upon him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he will be there interceding for us when you know um, when we cross the sirat, the bridge about which he, Allah spoke about, uh, the Prophet spoke about and said, on the day of judgment, every every human being shall cross a bridge called the sirat. Thinner than hair and sharper than a sword, uh, darker than a night, and people will cross on it. It will be on top of the fire of hell. Those you know, who, you know, who fall, then they fall in that pit. On you know, everybody will cross it. Some people will cross it like the blink of an eye. And the Prophet sallallahu mentioned that on that day, when after the believers cross it, he sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he will stand on the other side of the pit uh, of. Of, the, of, of that uh, bridge and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be crying and making dua for his ummah and he's saying Rabbi Sallim, Rabbi Sallim Rabbi Sallim, Rabbi Sallim Oh Allah, uh, save them Oh Allah, save them Oh Allah, save them Oh Allah, save them Lord, let them fall for every single believer every single one yeah, all the ummah he will be standing there who, 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 who else? Your, your father will just go in I mean, you'll be like, oh, I'm lucky I made it. Now I'm running. I'm running in, you know. No, no turning back. You know, really, I mean, uh, everybody, the Quran says, nobody's going to turn back. Nobody can in that situation turn back. Yet, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu will be there, interceding for every single one that said, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. You know, whether you're a Sunni or a Shia or a Salafi or a Sunni, all that, all, 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 all of that matters. Every single person is Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. You know, whether you loved him, you didn't love him, you honored him, you didn't honor him, you, uh, you made mawlid, you didn't make mawlid, he will be still there for you. We have to ask, are we there for him? You know, that, that's our question. You know, he, but he will be there for all of us, everybody, and making dua, Rabbi Salim, until every believer enters. That is the favor of the Nabi, alayhi salatu wasalam. And even when after we enter Jannah, his favor continues upon us because he will be at the highest level in paradise. When he'll be at the highest level, a'la illiyin, which is called, uh, you know, al-firdaus al-a'la or maqam al-mahmud, at that level in Jannah, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, but also then his favor continues. He says, Ya Allah, I yearn for my lovers. Yeah, because many of them are at the lower levels. In Jannah, but they are in lower levels, I yearn for them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will automatically at that moment upgrade all the lovers to the status of the Prophet Muhammad. So, so, so you know, his favors upon us, sallallahu alayhi wa he's the shining light, he's, you know, he's the opener and he's the seal, he's the guide, he's the supporter, sallallahu alayhi wa There's no human being, wallahi, who has done more of a favor on you than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Even your mother and your father, you know, uh, they, they, they've taken care of you bodily and brought you into this world. But your mother brought you into this world. But in reality, as the hadith says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for the sake of the Prophet Muhammad So it's not really, you're not here because of your mother or your father. We are here in this world. We exist because of him, sallallahu alayhi wa He is the cause of all existence, sallallahu alayhi wa And his rahmah on you is more than the rahmah of your parents because your father only showed you the ways of this world. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, is the, is the one that showed us the ways of this world and the hereafter. Deen and dunya, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So brothers and sisters in Islam, really, if there is anybody in this existence that deserves our complete love, it is him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's al-habib al-bahboob. Anybody that knew about him, anybody that learned about him, loved him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, you don't have iman until you love me more than you love your parents and your children and anybody else and it's interesting you use the metaphor of the parents and the children because the, usually the love that we have for our parents and our children is a love that is unconditional and it's a love that is illogical if people do anything for their children people will do anything for their parents so he used that love so in other words it's a crazy love that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it's a love that can never be finished there's one relationship, the one with your parents Ain't nothing in this world can cut, cut off your relationship of love with your parents. Nothing, you know, it's, it's, it, even if you bury it, really, if you're really hard-hearted, but it, 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 it's always going to be there. And the love for your children, anything can happen, but it will always be there. 
that's why the Nabi Sallallahu used that metaphor to, to, for, for the type of love that we are supposed to have for him. It must be unconditional. It must be emotional. It must be illogical. You know, it must be crazy. You know, it, it, it can't be an intellectual love. The love that you have for your parents is not an intellectual love. Uh, it's not like one day you sat and said, Okay, so uh, this guy took care of me and provided for me and paid for my fees. Uh, and paid for my school fees and my kindergarten fees and my college fees. And he paid for my transport and he paid for my rent, my house and my clothes and my shoes and my food, and my daily breakfast, lunch. So intellectually speaking, I'm supposed to love him. No. You know, uh, this lady took care of me and changed my nappies and uh, carried me in a womb, and, you know, and she didn't charge me rent for that in nine months, you know. Uh, you know, uh, you know. And I just told her, you can't come stay with me, you know. Uh, uh, my wife doesn't approve, you know, or whatever. And, uh, and, and this lady did all these things for me. So I'm, you, you don't love them on, on an intellectual level. You know, in fact, you can't love anybody on an intellectual level. Because love and intellect don't go together. Many of the times, the love we have is really unintellectual. You know, you know we can love the people where, where it makes no sense at all, you know. But so that love is, is, is like that. And the Nabi Sallallahu that's why he said that you have to love me more than you love your parents and your children. In other words, your love for him, it has to be that type of unconditional love. It must be a natural love. It can't be a made-up love. It can't be, oh, I'm a Muslim, oh, so I'm supposed to love the Prophet. Um, okay, I love him. You know, uh, it's not something you say. It has to be in you. You know, really, it, it must overflow, it must, it must be part in your body. Our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim radiallahu anh, said, he said, the love of the Prophet flows in my veins. He said, it flows in my body and my spirit, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It must be that type of love, the love that I give you some examples of that love. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, when, when the time came for hijrah to migrate from uh, Makkah to Medina, uh, and, and to the safety of Medina, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told all the sahaba, they can migrate and be safe. Uh, all of them, you know, most of them left. But Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu and Sayyidina Abu Bakr did not leave. They stayed. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, why don't you leave? He said, Ya Rasulullah, how can I leave when you are here? My beloved is here. I cannot leave you. And then they left together for the hijrah. When they left, when they went into the cave, the Prophet Ali salatu salam, before he can go in the cave, Sayyidina Abu Bakr went in the cave. He cleared up the cave, removed everything there. There were holes in the cave, and uh, Allah Masallah Allah Sayyidina Muhammad, you know, insects or you know, scorpions and snakes can come through there. So he started tearing off his, his own clothes. The jubba that he was wearing, he started tearing it off and closing all those holes. Let's talk about Until there was one more hole, and he didn't have anything to, to, to close now that with, he put his own feet there. Then he called the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu to come inside, and then the Messenger was tired. He said, Ya Rasulullah, you can sleep. I will watch. And the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam slept in the lap of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. He slept in the lap of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr had closed that hole with his feet, with his you know, heel. And then it so happened that a snake came and bit him, stung him there on his heels. And it was biting him again and again and until he started crying from the pain. He didn't even make a noise. He didn't want to disturb the Prophet's sleep. They had been traveling for three days. He started crying from the pain, and the, 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 the tears fell on the face of the Prophet ﷺ. So when the tears fell on his face, he opened his eyes. He said, Ya Abu Bakr. He said, what's the matter, Abu Bakr? What's going on? Why are you crying? He said, Ya Rasulullah, this snake has, has bit me. He said, let it come. He said, Ya Rasulullah, it's dangerous. He said, no, let it come. So when he moved his feet, the snake came. It came in and it didn't do anything. It just looked at the Prophet Ali for a while and then it just loved away. You know, it just went away. So he said, Ya Abu Bakr, you know who that snake was? He said, No, I just know he's a snake. He said, Ya Abu Bakr, that was a jinn. And that jinn had learned from some of the scriptures that I would be passing through this cave and be in this cave for, for, for three days. So for 500 years, that jinn has been staying in this cave just to have a look at me. Just to have a glimpse of me. And the day I came inside, your blocking is you. <laughs> you, know, you put your feet there. He's saying, no. He said, uh, I don't care even if it's Abu Bakr today, you know, but I've waited 500 years here. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get my, you know, uh, the value for that time that I spent here. Uh, 500 years, so that's why he just wanted to look at me. 
And then the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam took some something, a little bit of his blessed saliva, you know, of that mouth which never ever said anything that displeases Allah. That mouth which only said the zikr Allah. and praises of Allah. He took from that saliva and he rubbed it on the heels of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr was healed. And then Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr's daughter came the next day. She brought some milk. It was only enough for him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sayyidina Abu Bakr narrates that. He says, Wallahi, she gave drink to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And look at his words after that. Fashariba hattartawaytu. He says, so he drank from the milk until I became full. <laughs> In, until I was full. In other words, he drank to his fill, and the fact that he drank to his fill made me full. <laughs> made me full, and, and that's a statement of lovers, really. You know, it's like you know when when you're hungry and your child, and you see your child eating to his fill, and you you sometimes feel full just by looking at your son that he ate his fill, full. You know, and so that, that love you have, he says, Allah, he he drank from the milk until I felt full, and until I I was filled just by looking at him. The fact that he drank. This is the love they had. For the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam, there's many, many, many examples. Can go on and on. Uh, the, the love of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu was amazing. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu an, uh, you know, he, his love was such that uh, one day they asked him, What do you love in this dunya? He said, Yeah, I only love three things in this dunya, Ya Rasulullah. To hear your voice, to, to look at your face, and to sit in your company. <laughs> he said, There's three things I love in this world, Ya Rasulullah. You know, to, to, to sit in your company, and to hear your voice, and to look at your face. Uh, the love of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and when they were traveling in the Hijrah together, uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr would, would always go behind the Prophet Sallam to, 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 to uh, you know, protect him. And sometimes they would encounter you know, a stray you know, rider in the desert, and word was out that the, the people of Makkah are looking for Muhammad Sallam. So he would ask Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Oh Abu Bakr, we know you, because he was a businessman, he used to travel a lot. Who's this man in front of you? And Abu Bakr would give a very beautiful answer. He would say, Hadin Yahdini. He said, he's a guide that's guiding me on the road. <laughs> you know, he said, he's just a guide. You know, in those days you had a guide on the road if you don't know the roads. He said, he's a guide that guides me on the road, on the path. And you know, he didn't lie, huh? He didn't lie. He said, he, used to say it in a, he said, he's a guide that guides me on the path. So you understand what you understand from that, and I know also what I mean by that. He's a guide that guides me on the path. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed on, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, Every single night he used to cry in yearning from the Prophet. ﷺ. His wife says when the night comes, he goes in the corner of his house and he sits down and he puts his head between his legs and he starts crying. He says, Wa Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Wa Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, missing the Prophet. ﷺ. She said sometimes it would be the morning and he would be sitting like that until I would tell him, Go sleep. And he would be missing the Prophet. ﷺ. He had this, this, you know, this, this, this heaviness in him and sickness in him. Since the Prophet passed away, وسلم, until a year and a half after that, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Sadiq passed away. And he passed away in that love of the Prophet. وسلم. It was a Monday, and he told his daughter, called his daughter Aisha, and he said, Ya Aisha, what day is it? She said, It's a Monday. He says, I wish I die on this day, because this is the day in which my beloved died. See, even in that last moment, he's in that love mood. He says, my beloved died on this day. He's got nothing to do with, you know, with anything else. It's not an intellectual thing. He died on this day, and I wish I also died on this day. And he willed that he should be buried next to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he was buried there. You know, Sayyidina Abu Bakr really is an epitome of the love of the, for the Rasul, alayhi salatu wa sallam. Uh, love is about yearning. Love is about, you know, believing in your beloved when he came from the Mi'raj and told everybody about it, that I went to Jerusalem in one night and came back and went to the heavens, they all, uh, people started laughing and denying and making mockery of it. And Abu Jahal went to Abu Bakr, he said, Oh Abu Bakr, you know what your friend Muhammad is saying? He said, what? He's saying you went to Jerusalem in one night and came back. It takes six months to go and come back from Jerusalem in those three months going, three months coming. He said, if he has said it, I believe it. <laughs> That's why the Prophet ﷺ gave him the title of Siddiq. The, the, the true believer, the sincere believer. And uh, alhamdulillah, it's, you know, really, uh, we talk about Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. I don't know if many of you are aware that uh, Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi, uh, in whose cave we are sitting here, we are talking about the cave, you know. Uh, Rumi, you know, uh, was a direct descendant of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Uh, Jalaluddin Rumi, who, after whom this place is named, was a direct descendant of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. And he inherited that love as well. In one poem, Rumi says, Man bandaye Quranam, Garzi Daram, 
Man Khakirahim Muhammad Mukhtaram. Rumi says, I am the servant of the Quran as long as I live, and I am the dust from the feet of Muhammad as long as I live. You know, that's the words of Rumi. Uh, these were the lovers, and I want to conclude this, um, inshallah, uh, with, a, with, a, with a poem that uh, the Sheikh of our Sheikhs, Maulana Sheikh al Islam, Sheikh Ibrahim radiallahu an, uh, of Senegal, he wrote in love for the Prophet. Sallam, and I want to uh, just read that and share that poem with you. It's a beautiful poem, and it shows us how the lovers are. Abu Bakr al Siddiq was a lover of the Prophet Sallam, in the first century in his own time. But this is a lover of the Prophet. Sallam, uh, you know, not Abu Bakr who lived in Mecca and grew up with the Prophet وسلم, and lived with him his whole life. This is a lover who lived in the 20th century in Senegal. He's not an Arab, he's an African. He lived in Senegal, he lived in the 20th century, you know, 1400 years after the Prophet Muhammad. وسلم. How does he express the love? We mentioned Sayyidina Sadiq al Akbar, and now we mention uh, in a recent lover, Radiallahu Anlaum Sali ala Sayyidina Muhammad. He says, Maha hubbu khayril khalqi hubba siwahu bi qalbi lazi ahyahu sirru sanahu. He says, Indeed, the love of the best of creation has removed, has erased all other loves from my heart. <laughs> huh? He said, Indeed, the love of the best of creation has erased all other loves from my heart. Bi qalbi lazi ahyahu sirru sanahu, that heart of mine which was made alive with the light of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَلَسْتُ أَرُومُ الْوَصْلَ مِنْ غَيْرِ حَامِدٍ فَدَعَنْكَ مَحْبُوبًا سِوَاهُ وَهَاهُ He says, and I do not seek, I do not seek, uh, I do not yearn for anybody but the Messenger of Allah, but Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I do not yearn for anybody but Muhammad. فَدَعَنْكَ مَحْبُوبًا سِوَاهُ so leave all other beloveds. Leave all other beloved ones. Wahahu. For here is Muhammad. Here is the one that deserves the real love. All love. Here he is. Wahahu. Fa inna jamalan ghayra wajhu Muhammad wajhi Muhammadin nafahu jamalul Mustafa wa mahahu. He says, and for, for indeed, all other beauty other than the face of Muhammad has been erased and wiped away by the beauty of Muhammad. You know, there is other beauty out there in the world. Yes, there is. There's many beautiful things out there. The world is filled with beauty. But he says, Sheikh Ibrahim says, but indeed, all other beauty in this world has been overcome and overshadowed by the beauty of Muhammad. Beauty of the Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, هُوَ الْحُسْنُ وَالنُّورُ الْمُبِينُ فَمَنَّحَا لِحَضْرَتِهِ بِالْحُبِّنَا لَمُنَاهُ he said, he, for he is indeed all beauty. He is beauty himself. He is beauty himself. And that's a very deep statement. Uh, he says, he is beauty himself. And he is the shining light. For, and whosoever goes to his presence with love will gain whatever they desire. Uh, whoever goes towards the presence of the Prophet وسلم, with love will gain what they all desire. Huwa kullu minhu kullu haqqan wa lam akun Indeed, he is everything, and everything is from him. 